Good morning, everyone, and thank you again for listening. We're so glad you joined us this morning. This is Mark with Douglas here, and we're going to share with you a very powerful message about Jesus Christ. And we're going to focus in on Philippians chapter 3, one of the clearest, most powerful chapters that we see about how we're supposed to live and our purpose. And we want to specifically talk today about a passage uh, that we're going to start with in Philippians 3.8. And, and Paul is actually making a statement at the very end of the verse. Uh, and he, what he's saying is that I may gain Christ. That I may gain Christ. A and we're here today to talk to you about what that means for us every single day of our life. Where was Paul coming from? And how does that impact our life? That we may actually gain Christ. So, so, Douglas, go ahead and get us started. Thank you, Mark. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> this, is, this is actually uh, really something. I, I was looking at this last night before I went to bed, and the whole book of Philippians is about joy. That's right. As cre <laughs> new creatures in Jesus, as old creatures in Jesus, we're supposed to be full of joy. And um, in everything that we're doing, doesn't matter what the situation is, uh, that joy is tested a lot of times because things change. And I, I mean, I got a phone call last night. I was going to go to a funeral today, and mm -hmm. and uh, and I have a dentist appointment today, and it was at the same time. And how are we going to do this? Now I could have gotten all shook up, I guess you could say, but um, you know, I just settled down a little bit and made a few phone calls, and everything worked out perfect. That's right. You know? And and that's the way it is. Uh, you know, God has a hold of our lives, and uh, we need to understand that. I mean, when we uh, let me just, I was going to start in verse 8, but here in verse 1 of chapter 3, it says, For the rest, my brethren, delight yourselves in the Lord, and continue to rejoice that you are in Him. Isn't that something? Continue to rejoice no matter what is going on. And, um, you know, I, as I look back at the last few years, I mean, I was always a healthy person, and then all of a sudden, everything well, they say, fell apart. And um, I, I had my back operated on, and, and, and it got infected, and, and then I had to go back for another back operation. And these were, these were huge operations. This wasn't anything small. And then after I got my second operation, and this was over a period of about a year, the last day I was at the doctor's office, he said, let's get a, 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 another x-ray and make sure everything's okay. I said, okay. And while I was laying there, my colon ruptured. Mm. And I didn't know what it was. I just knew I was in a lot of pain. By the time I got from Charlotte to Shelby, I was, I was just almost totally gone because of the pain. Yeah. And I called a friend of mine. He said, get to the hospital. So I went up here to the hospital. And um, I had a ruptured colon, sure enough. And I had to operate and I almost died. Mm -hmm. And then I had three other operations after that on the same situation and so the la and that's left me almost so i couldn't do really anything and uh but you know the joy of the lord is my strength and, and that's I, right I, I, not that i've i'm like paul not that i've arrived uh -huh. but I'm, I'm heading that direction <laughs> how about you this that's morning right. that's right how about you up there this that's, morning are you heading in that direction right. when things don't go right and i mean uh my, my work at the church i mean everything was fell apart because of this and uh you know and i'm at the home by myself a lot of times and you know that's when the devil just starts to hammer you and he just starts to tell you this and he tells you that and he tells you this and he tells you that and it's very easy just to get down and think you're no good and you know nothing's worked out and it's all your fault and and um and you know how that goes. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's, right. that's 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 real. That's what he does. That's real everyday living. I mean, things don't always go the way you want it. And for me, it sure hasn't gone that way. And I'm only now, um, we'll say, in the last short time or year mm -hmm. or so, started to to see, you know, this this is an attack of the devil. The devil is really after you, and. Um, you know, I mean, I remember when, when mom came into the hospital when I was up here and she bent down and, and, and I have just about died. And that just, you know, I hadn't been awake for very long and right. in my room. And, and um, she came over and she leaned over to me and she said, 
this really isn't your fault. I mean, you know, the devil's after you. He wants to stop you. And, you know, I've had a hard time believing that mm -hmm. because in me, I wanted to say, no, it's really my fault. Mm -hmm. And so there I was arguing with God. Right. You know, and that, that's what we do. We argue with him. And, and that's why he, Paul said, he said, I don't put any confidence in the flesh because when you do things your way in the flesh and out of your decision making, it's always going to end up wrong. I don't right. care how good it looks like and how successful you may appear to be, it's going to fall apart somewhere yes. down the road because we weren't created to be led by ourselves. We were created to be led by God. Isn't that good news this morning? Yes. <laughs> Isn't that good news this morning? And so, anyway, I, it's been a real fight. It's been a real battle. And then um, a dear friend of mine died, and, and we... Mm -hmm. He was buried yesterday, and today I'm going to another funeral of, of a friend of mine <clears throat> that passed away unexpectedly. Right. And, um, you know, with a lot of us, we don't know the, the day or the hour, or, you know, all of a sudden, you know what I mean? That's right. And it's, how, how are we going to handle these situations? But then I went to my room last night, and I was looking at, looking at this, this book, Philippians, and it, it found out it's all about joy. And... Um, for example, you know, in a lot of these Bibles, it has a little heading above each chapter. And chapter one is joy and suffering. I mean, Paul wrote this letter in prison. That's right. How would you handle that? How would I handle that? You know what I mean? Uh, chapter two is about joy and serving. It shouldn't be a, a, a drudgery. It shouldn't be a, a burden. It should be a joy to want to help people. Because when, you, when you're helping people, I mean, just God just is able to flow through us because we're thinking about you instead of about me. That's right. You know? And then in chapter 3, it's a joy in believing. I mean, believing ought to be a joy. I mean, just because we don't know everything, you know, down the road doesn't mean... I mean, we have Jesus in us today, and we should be full of joy and be happy today. That's right. You know, don't worry about tomorrow. Today is going to take care of itself. There's things today to deal with, and here we are worrying about what's going on down the road. And then chapter 4, and there's only six pages in this little book of Philippians, and, and it says that the word rejoice and rejoicing and joy are used over 16 yeah. times in this, in, this little, in this little four chapter, six page book. Isn't that something? Yeah. Over 16 times. So he said, For the rest, my brethren, delight yourselves in the Lord and continue to rejoice. So did we wake up this morning rejoicing? I mean, that, did we, you know? What was the song in our heart? What was the thoughts of our mind? That Jesus is a great day. I was sitting in my chair again this morning, and the thunder hit so hard, it felt like it, it rattled the house, and it, it um, felt like a truck was, was running wild. through the wall. I mean, it was unbelievable. And, um, but it wasn't. It was just a loud crash of thunder, you know. That's right. God's speaking this morning to Rutherford County. I mean, <laughs> you know, the thunder always comes before the storm, right? Yeah. And, um, and he's been thundering a lot lately. I mean, he, he's using, he's using uh, this COVID virus, COVID-19 thing, mm -hmm. to really get our attention. How are we looking at that? Are we looking at it like, oh, this is a big disease that's hit and... You know, what are we going to do this time around? Are we saying God's trying to speak to us? God is trying to say something with this epidemic that's hit the world. Not just Rutherford County, not just North Carolina, not just the United States, but all over the world, this thing is hitting. And what are we, what's our reaction? What is our reaction? Are we going to let the joy of the Lord be our strength, like it says in Nehemiah? Or are we going to fall apart? and worry and, and, and just not know what to do. And, and actually, Paul was given a warning here. And he said, watch out for the, the Judaizers and, and the, the, the evil people and the, the, the people that are trying to bring about their own plans and people that are trying to come into the Christian life with their old religious beliefs and trying to bring their religious, old religious beliefs into the new walking with Jesus life. And, and it doesn't work. And he's saying, watch out. Don't be around those people. And um, he, he goes on to say, by the time he gets down to verse 8 here, I, I was going to start in the middle of that verse, but I'll, I'll read the whole thing because I know Mark wants to say something about this verse. Yeah. He said, yes, furthermore, I count everything as loss compared to the possession 
of the priceless privilege. Do we look at being a Christian as a priceless privilege? I, I mean, I, I know for the most part, people, we don't. Right. But we should. That's I right. mean, it's a priceless privilege, the overwhelming preciousness and the surpassing worth, the supreme advantage, listen to all those words, mm -hmm. of knowing Christ Jesus, our Lord, and progressively becoming more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, of perceiving, recognizing, and understanding him more fully. I looked at those three words, perceiving, uh, recognizing, and understanding. You know, it's kind of like they all go together. Right. You, you begin to perceive something, you know something's up, and then uh, you, you begin, then you, you recognize what it is, and then you understand it. And right. from that point, you can go on with Jesus, <laughs> or you can go on in your own self. <clears throat> um, progressively becoming more and, and uh, deeply and intimately acquainted with him, uh, perceiving and recognizing and understanding him more fully and more clearly. Now listen to this. For his sake, for his sake, I have lost everything. And Paul, you know, when you start talking about who you are, Paul said, well, I can talk about who I am too. You know, I was, I was, I was born a, a, an Israelite. I, I was a Hebrew of Hebrew. I was a Pharisee. I, I, when it came to the law, I did everything the right way. Right. I mean, I, I, had, I had it made, you know. But did he? When he met Jesus, he found out he, it was worth nothing. Hmm. And he said here, for his sake, I have lost everything and consider it all to be mere rubbish in order that I may win, that is, gain Christ the anointed, the anointed one. And I wrote down here, the word, the word gain, uh, it, it, it means um, to reach or arrive at a desired destination. Isn't that good? Yeah. To reach or arrive at a desired destination destination and what was what was paul reaching out for what was his desired desired destination uh it was to know jesus he said and that i may actually be found and known as in him not in himself mm -hmm. but in jesus that was his desired destination he wanted to be full of jesus he wanted to be like jesus and what we found out is every situation we go into when this all happened with me, I, I can't talk about anybody else's situation, but I can talk about my own. When all this began to happen with me, uh, you know, and if that wasn't enough, then the virus hits, and everybody's in their home. And now we can't be together, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and so everything comes against you, but how are we going to handle that? Are we going to, are we going to, you know, how did Paul handle being in prison? Uh, he let the joy of the Lord stay with him and be his strength. He, he, he recognized that these are, all these situations are designed to make us stronger and to know Jesus right. better. Couldn't you say amen? Amen. I mean, truthfully, they're all designed to make us stronger and to, to know him more clearly and more clearly and more clearly and more clearly. <laughs> That's what these are all designed, and, and, you know, uh, so that we have confidence. So when we're around people, uh, you know, aren't you, uh, you know, aren't you sad that your friend left? Well, I mean, it was a surprise, but, right. but today is today. And to, what are we going to do with today? Today is Jesus' day. He's the one that we, we live and move and have our being because of him, not because of us. Today we're going to take hold of Jesus and keep on telling people the good news. That's right. Amen. Did you want to say something about it? Yes, and I, uh, you know we're talking about verse eight, and you were mentioning yeah. Paul, and uh, hey, Paul really had everything going for him in in the natural. He and did. you were talking about, I mean, I was reading through Paul's life here, and before this, he says that he was actually blameless according to the law. I mean, since he was eight years old, he was circumcised. He was a, a tribe of Benjamin. He was doing everything in his own might perfectly. I mean, that's a pretty strong statement to say. Yeah. I was totally blameless. Right? Could you imagine following the law like that, all of those laws? And, and yet he says in verse 8, in spite of all of how I grew up and what I was doing, I count it all as loss, and, and that word there, when you're looking at loss, it's it's rubbish, it's it's actually refuge, it's it's dung. I mean, it's it's as low as you can go 
of counting everything that was in his life that he spent all of his life mm-hmm. building up and building up and trying to do the right thing every single day. Uh, you know, they had all these uh, rituals and, and laws and he was doing everything right. And he, and he says well, he, he counts everything of his past that he built up. All of the striving was just counted as nothing, just dung. And, you know, I was thinking, Douglas, about our life. Uh, how we've got to come to that place every day. Uh, you know, we, we have these lives that we've lived. Maybe you out there have lived a life where you have built up a certain lifestyle. Uh, you wake up in the morning, you go through your day, you have your little kingdom. Uh, you have a job you go to. Uh, whatever that job is, you, it, you may go there and go through your day and, and not realize it, but you're going through your day perhaps like Paul. Because you're doing what you know to do, how you know to do it, in your kingdom. Then you get home at night, you have your family maybe or whatever, and you get home and you do what you want to do. You do those things that you know to do. And, and, and whether or not you may think of it like this, you and I have built up kingdoms our lives That's true. And, and we've acquired things and you seek after things and we have a house and we have a car and, and, and all of this kingdom in your life Uh, Like Paul said, everything that we have as of this moment, if it's not that we have just considered everything lost except to gain Jesus Christ, that we may know him. If that is not our life, if that is not what has controlled our life to build up our life every day, then, then we have to do like Paul said. We have to count it as loss. We have to count it as rubbish. And and this to me. Uh, Douglas is a verse that we got to live every day. We have to count as loss anything in our life that is going out there through our day and striving and seeking. You know, Paul says he he strived and he he sought after his own righteousness, but then he realized that to gain Christ, he has to count all of that as loss. And for me personally, this really went to my heart. Because, mm-hmm. because in my day today, we're, we're about to start our day today, and, and everybody like Douglas Shear has so much to do today. But if we, if we don't have the same heart as this in, in, in verse 8, we've got to today count as loss our past lifestyle of doing what we know to do. Yeah. Don't don't leave today as you listen to this program, and all of a sudden get on those. You're, you're ready, it's like ready, set, go, right? You just, I mean, I have so much to do today, and you probably do too. But we can't just jump into our day like that and do like we've done before, where we leave Jesus. Because as Douglas read, the, the to gain Christ should be what we go after today. And so, if it's not to gain Christ today. If when you don't stop listening to this and you jump into your day mm-hmm. and you don't have that in your heart today to gain Christ, and Douglas talked about this, I love this in verse 8, because it talks about what is it to gain Christ? It talks about that we that we perceive him today, that you recognize him today, and that you come to a clear understanding of him today. That's gaining Christ. It's knowing him today. So, so we have to today, every moment, count loss today. Count your plans today, whatever you plan today. If you weren't having a determination to know Jesus Christ today, and you weren't having a determination to recognize him today, and count all of your own ability and everything mm-hmm. you want as loss, then, then, you, then do it now. Do it now. Let's all do it now. Yeah. And let's, let's just join in with this verse and say, today I'm going to count as loss all of the old lifestyle because today, we want to gain Christ. We want to know him today. That's right. I mean, if, if a man is really honest, if I'm really honest, at the end of the day, when I sit at the edge of my bed, what have I accomplished? That's right. What, what happened today? Did I, do, did I wake up and say, well, Douglas, what do you want to do today? What are we going to do today? Or did I wake up and say, Jesus, what do you want to do today? That's right. That's what, that's what this is all about. It's mm-hmm. dying to ourselves, getting out of ourselves, and learning to live Jesus, what do you want? I mean, how do we get along with our wives? How do we get along with our children? How do we get along with each other? I mean, you know, we can't get along with each other without Jesus. I can just tell you that. That's right. I mean, things break down, you know? I was a musician, and you think to get, you think to get four or five guys together and play together, mm-hmm. that's going to work? I mean, everybody's doing their own thing, right. and you end up hating each other, and yeah. You know, I mean, you know, at work, you start out real strong, and then, 
you know, after a while, you, you know, as the strife comes in, because Jesus isn't there. That's right. Everything we do, you know, <clears throat> we, Jesus wants to be there. Yes. He wants us to let him be there. But are we letting him be there? That's, that's the question. And you can, you can tell by how you feel. I mean, is the joy of the Lord your strength, or is the, the joy of you your strength? Right. What, what's your strength? Are you your own self-made man, or are you God's man? That's what we have to, that's what we're striving to do. Right. And it's very easy, it's very easy. That's why, you know, Paul, Paul uh, he said, it's not irksome for me, you know, well, it's not a, a drudgery for me to keep going over the same thing over and over and over and over and over, because it's your it's your protection, it's, it's for your safeguard, it's for your, you know, I'm, I'm going over this so we can get it. You know, one time somebody told me a good teacher goes over things over and over and over, saying the same things, you know, over and over and over again. Why? Until we get it inside of us. I can tell you, Mom, I've been in this church now for 35 years. We came here on July 18th of 1985. And it's what's the year now? It's 2020. Right. I guess that's about 35 years. Isn't it? Right. Yep. And it's been the same message about every week, every every Wednesday, every Sunday morning, every Sunday night. Yep. God wants our life. Do we know Jesus? Are we doing things the way He wants us? Did we? Have, you know, when when we get when things go on, you know, and, and you're faced with it, and somebody comes up and says, "Well, did you ask Jesus about that?" You know, you got to hang your head and say, "Well." Not really. I mean, I thought about it. I thought about it, but I didn't ask Jesus. Are we asking Jesus? If we ask Him, the joy of the Lord will be our strength. If we don't ask Him, we just go on our own ability, which breaks down fast. <clears throat> verse nine here. We're we're about out of time, Mark. In verse nine here, it says this. It says that I may actually be found and known as in him, that I may actually be found and known as in him. Am I being actually found and known as in me? Is everything about me? Because he talks about right. that here. He said, everybody's after their own thing. Everybody's doing their own thing. He said, but that's not the way life's supposed to be. We're supposed to be helping each other. That's right. We're supposed to be helping each other. Are we found to be known as in him? I mean, that's... Mm -hmm. That's 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 a powerful that's a powerful statement there. Yeah. Well, here comes Mark Morris, the man of God. You know. Right. I mean, you you've been found to be known as in Him. That is powerful. I, I mean, that's that's powerful. That's powerful. And and the only way we're going to be known in Him is if we do what verse eight right above it says. Yeah. We got to count everything as loss in our life. Yeah. Every, everything about us has to be rubbish. You know, Paul said dung. Everything about Mark Morris and Douglas, we've got to just all of that's got to be rubbish. Yeah. And then and then if we do that, and when we just set to gain Christ, then when we come around other people, they're going to say that that he's in, they know us to be in him. Yeah. Isn't that great? That's, Look what it says. It says that I may actually be found and known as in him, not having any self achievement. Mm -hmm. It's not what I've done that makes me special. Or important or famous, it's what God's done. That's right. He's the one that gets the glory for it. I know I couldn't do it, but He did it through me. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, He's the one that gets the recognition for what happened, not me. That's really that's really powerful. that is that is so important. You know, yesterday we during our church service praise and worship yesterday morning was mm -hmm. so strong. <clears throat> we were singing a song um, that that we just bow down before Him. And that he is he is our shepherd. Yeah. We're the sheep of his pasture. Uh, come, let us worship and bow down. Yeah. And and you know our church just you know, God was really moving on our hearts, and 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 many of us just got on our knees um, as we we're singing and just just bowing down to him, mm -hmm. recognizing that he he is our God. He is our shepherd. And you know I, I was doing that, and and I was just you know God really moving on our all our hearts and. God really spoke to me something in the middle of that song that um, God said to me that He is glorified when we surrender. Mm -hmm. Through 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 when you surrender, He is actually glorified. And that's what this is talking about. Yeah. When we surrender our life, He is glorified. That's really good, Mark. Say it again. Yeah, when when <laughs> what God said was when you surrender, 
God is glorified. And, and that really, that's that's what yeah. we want, isn't it? We want him it to be glorified. It really is. It really is. Yeah. That I may actually be found and known as in him, not having any self-righteousness, self-achieved righteousness, that can be called my own, based on my <laughs> obedience to the law's demands and suppose right standing with God, but possessing the genuine righteousness which comes through faith in Christ, the truly right standing with God which comes from God through faith in Jesus. That's what, yeah. that's what he's asking that's this right. morning. We want to be found in him. We want the genuine, true righteousness. We want to you know, I, I just have to say, Jesus, forgive me a, a hundred times. You know what I mean? You just start thinking about things. You want to go that direction. That's why we need to be around each other. Right. That's why, you know, you, you can use this virus to, 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 to and, and, and be justified to yourself, thinking, well, I can't be around anybody, and so here I am by myself doing my own thing. But that's not the intention. The intention is we're separated, yes, but let's get to Jesus and find out what we can do to help each other, right. what we can do to, to advance his kingdom, That's right. to advance his life. Because people out there this morning, you're out there this morning, and you're lonely, you don't know what to do, you're, you're stuck, you might not have enough strength, you might not have enough understanding, you might not have enough money, you might not, a lot of things, but... There's only one thing that we need, and his name is Jesus. That's right. With Jesus, we can do all things. I mean, about everything yeah. we say, is, you know, there's a song about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's right. It's, it's hard sometimes start, to You to want to start these. singing it. You, <laughs> yeah. We can do all things. Yeah. Without him, yeah. we can do nothing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's amazing. And, but that's the way God wants it to be. We want to talk about him, sing about him. That's right. Uh, rejoice in him, praise in him. Uh, everything that we do, God wants us to put him first because he's got the plan. He, he's the yes. one that knows what he wants to do with my life. He's the one that knows what he wants to do with Mark's life. Mark mm -hmm. doesn't know what to do. Right. Douglas doesn't know what to do. That's right. But God, he does. He does. That's right. Jesus, this morning, that's what we want. Mm -hmm. We want to be like you, Jesus. We want to be found in you as having... No self-righteousness, but genuine righteousness, which comes through faith in Jesus. Which comes through faith. Paul said, my determined purpose is that I may know him. My determined purpose. I wrote down the word purpose here. We just have one second left here. The word purpose is the reason for which something is done. Why are we doing what we're doing? Why did God do what he did in creating us? It's, it's, it's um, the reason for which something was created. Well, why was this created? The reason for which something exists. Why does this exist? There's answers to those questions, and they can only be found in Jesus. In Jesus. Isn't that good news this morning? Yes. Isn't that good no news this morning? Paul's determined purpose is that he might know him. And, and progressively, it doesn't all come at once. You know, we get all worried about we got to have everything at once, you know? But it doesn't come, it comes little by little, bit by bit. We become more and progressively uh, and deeper and intimately acquainted in Jesus. That's right. And we're out of time today, but uh, that's a great place to leave off and start our day today. Is uh, Here we are, Philippians 3.10. We've covered three verses, Douglas. We didn't really even hardly scratch it, the surface of it, did we? We did not. <laughs> Hopefully we, did not. we gave a little bit. But, <laughs> but today I want to encourage you to... To let that be in your heart. Our determined purpose today, when you go on your day, get ready, get ready to get started today. Here we go. Your determined purpose today, whoever you are out there listening, is that you may know him. And and when you have that in your heart and you come to know him, it is the greatest thing. And, and all of a sudden, when you really know him, all of the other stuff that you have in your life that you've built up and how you've lived, you'll want to consider that as loss 
because to gain Jesus Christ is everything. So thank you again for listening to us. Uh, this is Mark and Douglas with Word of Faith Fellowship. We're on this program Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 8.30 to 9. We also have a website where we video all our radio programs. You can watch every one of these. And we are. you can go to our website. It's uh, www.wordoffaithfellowship.org. Thank you. Have a great day.